and welcome to Destiny X, making a difference for this next generation. I'm Destiny Yarbrough, your host today, and I have a very special friend and guest with me today. We have Lisa Burkhart Worley, all the way from Dallas, Texas. She is the founder of Pearls of Promise Ministries. She's also the executive director and producer of her podcast, her show, her radio station. She's doing many things in the kingdom and she's part of Christian Women in Media, which is my tribe. <laughs> Welcome today, it's so good to be with you. My tribe too, we're yes, in the same tribe. That's yes, that's right. It's great to be here, Destiny. I've really enjoyed spending some time with you yes, and, and always. talking about God stuff. That's my favorite subject. Yes, amen. Well, we're gonna to talk today about hearing the voice of God. And um, I just wanna ask you, Lisa, speak to that a little bit. You know, you hear people say, hearing the audible voice of God. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's not always the way you hear the voice of God. An audible voice, I think I've heard an audible voice maybe once or twice uh, mm -hmm. in my life. But there's, there is uh, like an impression on your spirit that you might hear. And sometimes it's like an audible voice. You, you, it's like you hear someone speaking, but it's within your soul. Yes. It's like within your spirit. And, and you know it's not your thought. And let me give you an example. I call it uh, hearing uh, God's voice from left field, which is, you know, <laughs> a, a, I'm a sportscaster, former sportscaster, so yeah. I talk in baseball terms. But uh, uh, that means it's just kind of uh, like comes from another place. Yes. Right? And I can remember one time, this is just an example. Um, I was at a board retreat for Christian women in media, and I was talking to a woman named Susan, and Susan was telling me about her college days. And she said, you know, I was a chemistry and biology major. Mm -hmm. And I was so impressed with that because I was terrible at both of those, well, especially biology. Yes. I did okay in chemistry. But biology and high school and college were absolutely my worst subjects for whatever the study of life and I did not get along. Well, as I'm speaking to her, I, uh, I said, you know, that is amazing that, uh, that you did that. I said, I was terrible at biology and chemistry. And that's really um, strange because my dad was a medical doctor. And then from left field, this voice comes in. It was like in my spirit. He go, and I knew it wasn't me because it's mm -hmm. like he interrupted the right. conversation. Right. He said, you may not be a doctor like your father, Lisa, but I gifted you to heal. Amen. And we have a healing ministry. Yes. My ministry, Pearls of Promise, is all about emotional healing. And then God has also called me to lay hands on people. Come on. <laughs> yes. I want <laughs> to heal wanna, them. Yeah, I want to talk but about... He, he works through me. I'm just a conscience. Yes, that's right. And he... We know when the anointing of God comes upon us because I have a story, I don't know if you knew about this, years ago, you know, I'm in property management and I was sitting at my desk and the Holy Spirit, back then I wasn't where I'm at now, you know, with my relationship to the Holy Spirit, but he said, go down to this particular apartment and check on this particular person. And I was like, what? And he kept saying that over and over and this was like at nine o'clock in the morning. And then around 11, I looked at my assistant manager and I said, I feel like we need to go down to this particular person's apartment and check on them. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me kind of strangely and said, what? I said, no, I really feel like we need to go check on this person. And then by 12 o'clock, he was pounding it into me going, go now, go now. Gotta act on it. And I didn't really understand that, but that's where that obedience comes in. So we go down, this is a true story. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. like when, when you hear it, you're gonna be like, what? We go down to the apartment I knock on the door and my assistant was kind of standing behind me and I was in front and the door cracked open and we felt, I felt this whoosh and it literally pushed me back. And I said, did you feel that? And she said, no. I said, and it smelled like a stench. Mm. I can't explain, it was a stench. And the lady peeks her head out and she says, can I help you? And you could tell she was kind of out of it. I said, hey, we just came down to check on you. Are you okay? Is everything okay? So she shuts the door. We start walking away. She comes out in the breezeway. She has a bra on and a pair of jeans, no shoes. She's li probably like 4'11", probably 100 and maybe 10 pounds, okay? Yeah. So she comes outside and she's kind of staggering and she wanted to use my phone and the Holy Spirit said, no, have her come to the office to use the phone. So I said, well, you can get a coat on, it's cold outside, and we'll take you down to the office. She has this blue coat on over her bare skin and her bra, and she's walking in front of us. Now, Theo is a probably six foot, you know, larger woman than this 110 pound lady. 
And I'm walking behind her and she had the blue coat on and the Holy Spirit said, put your hand on her shoulder, lay your hand on her. And he kept just pressing it to me and I'm like, what, what? And I was really not gonna do it because right. I was like, what is going on here? I put my hand on her shoulder and she started foaming at the mouth oh. and she started cursing out God, cursing at God. And it was the anointing. God appointed me for that time, but I didn't know in that moment that he was actually sending us down to that apartment to save this woman's life. And then he gave us a deliverance ministry, yes. like what you just said about the healing ministry. This is real stuff, guys. This is true, real stuff. This is how God operates. So we get down to the office and she starts going from flesh to spirit. She had been possessed and, that, and she was cursing in that demonic voice. And my whole staff, they're all, they were all saved and they're all um, believers. I was going to say that if they weren't, they were, that, well, that day you, they probably were. Well, let me tell you what happened. The police officer for Gwinnett County would not come in the office. He was afraid, which showed me that he wasn't a believer and wasn't saved. And did, he was scared. He's like, I'm not going in there. Well, come to find out she had been in that apartment doing meth and drinking uh. Listerine for a week and mm. was could have been dead. Mm. And so we, her family thanked us, we actually saved her life, and we brought her to Christ a week later. That is amazing. Yeah. Destiny, yeah. what a story what of a story. hearing Let me tell you. God's voice. I tell you, uh, I'll never forget that story as long as I live. Yeah, that, I think that's a good reminder that when we feel something in our spirit, like call that person or uh, yeah, you need to pray for this person, we need to do it. We, it's yes. an obedience thing. I, I'll tell a quick one. Uh, I remember um, thinking about a friend of mine who I worked with in uh, television in my first um, job. And, for, and it was years later, and some, for some reason she kept coming to my mind, kept mm -hmm. coming to my mind, and I did not call her. Well, I found out later she was near death, oh, wow. and she'd gone to the hospital. She had some female issues that were serious. She goes, Lisa, that is around the same time that I almost died. I thought, oh, forgive me, Lord, for not listening and, uh, and acting right. on your voice. And right. so I've really tried to be obedient from that point on. And when, I, when, I, when somebody comes to mind, I, I reach out to them, right. text, call, and, um, yeah. and ask them if anything's going on. I mean, he doesn't call the equipped, he equips the call. That's right. So when he tells us he's, 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 he's using us as not only a mouthpiece, but to be his vessels in the earth, to heal, to give hope to the hurting, to you know break chains, to bring deliverance, to pray for someone. And you know, I consider it an honor that we, we can do that and we can call ourselves daughters of the King. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of ways that we can hear God's voice besides that, besides that impression upon your spirit. You know, one of the other ways we can hear God's voice, and this is kind of new for me, honestly, are dreams. Yes. Uh, paying attention to our dreams. Uh, for many years, I just, you know, I'd wake up and go, what was that? You know, it was some strange dream that I had. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, this is bizarre. It must have been something I ate the night before. But, right. you know, dreams have symbols in them. Yes. And so I just recently had a dream, and it was about Toulouse, France. Okay, I was looking for a train station in Toulouse, France. So if anybody knows anything about Toulouse, France, please contact me because this is what I dreamt about. I'd never been there. I've only, I'd been to Paris, but I'd never been anywhere else. Yeah. And, I, and I was looking for the train station. There was a b body of water around the city. Mm -hmm. And I, again, I don't know anything about it, never talked to anybody about it. And so I looked up Toulouse, France, and I saw this scene that I saw in my dream. I saw wow. the water. And so I'm asking God, still asking him, what is this about? Well, I, uh, I uh, looked up, I'm working on, uh, I was working on an anti-Semitism documentary. Um, I, I've, I'm in Messianic Studies for my yeah. um, doctorate, or my Doctor of Ministry. And so I found out that uh, Toulouse, France has a very large uh, Jewish community, and they had experienced an anti-Semitic event back in 2011, I believe it is. And so I don't know what it's about exactly, but two weeks later, mm -hmm. we had an offer to go on a riverboat cruise through France and with some friends. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, two weeks after this dream. So I said to my husband, can we go to Toulouse? 
And I don't know what's there. Right. But I'm paying attention because yeah. this was a bizarre, specific yeah. dream. Yeah. And I have to believe that God was speaking to me through that dream. And mm -hmm. there's something there for me. And it may be that he is going to unveil it in the next yeah. year. But I'm trusting him. You know, sometimes you just got to yeah. trust. What does that mean? And ask for an interpretation. Uh, talk to a, a friend who may be prophetic mm -hmm. or who has that kind of uh, gifting. gifting. Right, and say, this is what I dreamt, and what yeah. do you think it is? I knew when you were talking, I was thinking, he gave you that dream because he's giving you a vision, and now it's just bringing the interpretation to it to bring it all together. Right. So you're right, and he does. And I, like, used to get up in the middle of the night and write down it. If I would get up to go to the bathroom or something, I'd be like, i got to write that you down. And I started keeping a notepad near my bed with a pen because when I journal, I sometimes he'll show me things even as I'm journaling, and I'll, I'll remember a dream that I had. Yeah, so. it's important to write it down because I know when I don't write it down or put it in my journal, yeah. I'll forget it because it is from God. It's not your own thoughts, and right. so you have to write it down. Yeah, you know, you were talking about, I had a dream about my ex-husband when we were um, still married. There was this glass case with all these black snakes, and it was color. It was as vivid as you can imagine. And I was just so vexed in my spirit, and I was like, come over here. And I kept doing this, come over here. And Spencer was two years old, and it was when he was two, and he was crawling around the floor, and the snakes were trying to get to him. And I took a knife, and I was cutting their heads off so they couldn't get to him. Evil. Evil. Yeah, the right. demonic. The black snakes were a representation of demonic. Well, my ex-husband never did come around, and as you know, he passed away in December from, you know, his addiction. And I believe God was showing me in that dream, your son is going to be protected because you're going to use me to help protect. And I'd always prayed over Spencer that that generational curse would be broken off of him from that bloodline. And I think God showed me that dream for a reason because he knew down the road he wasn't going to come to this side. He was going to stay where he was. That's right. And Spencer's such a fine young man. Oh, and, and, you. You, and I think the, the real, realization, your prayers have all influenced him. And he, he is thank removed you. from all that. You know, another uh, way that's an obvious way to hear God's voice is to get into his presence. Yes. Now, that's the you know, real obvious one, but not all of us do that, yeah. right? Um, it, my, I don't know what I'd do without my morning time with God. I, I used to spend maybe 30 minutes as I, when I was working full-time. Then um, now yeah. I, I work full-time, but I can manage my schedule a little bit right. better because uh, I'm in ministry and I run my own ministry. Um, but, and of course, God's the CEO. Yes. But anyway, so I get into his presence, and, and so what I do is I worship, and then I uh, read his word, and I always ask him, say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, show me what it is you want me to hear from your word. Yeah. And then I spend time um, in prayer. But one of the things I didn't do really, you know, because once you pray, it's like, ah, gotta, gotta get up, gotta get moving. But one of the things that was very much lacking in my quiet time, and I think this is a word for everyone, was silence. Mm -hmm. After I pray, I wasn't, I wasn't taking silence, I taking a, a, an opportunity to hear you know, just be still yeah. and to hear what God had to say to me. Right. So I've really started to institute that into my quiet time. You know, one way we can do that is through a practice called Lectio Divina. Mm. Um, it's, it's where you read, you read a scripture out loud like three different times and you pray as you read it out loud three different times. You say, Lord, show me what part of this passage you want me to pay attention to. What, do, what word do you want me to hear? And then you kind of just like chew on that. Right. You chew on it. And you ask God, what, what, what do you want to say to me through this? So that is one practical so way good. So good. Uh, to, to hear God's voice in just your morning quiet time. Yeah. And I found as I, in, I've put that practice into my uh, morning uh, devotion, uh, I am hearing his voice even more. Yeah. I usually, I journal and I blog. I'm a blogger right. too. And so I write down when he's speaking, I just write down what he's saying. And basically right. my blog is, is what he's saying to me and I just push it out there and, and, and maybe it'll speak to somebody else. Well, it's so important that you touched on that because when we're going through hard times, when we're going through stuff, 
I've learned, I used to go in the closet and just cry and say, why God, why is this happening to me? Yeah. But now I say, what are you trying to show me in this? Right. That's that listening, guide me, show me, teach me. What are you trying to show me through this? So it is important that we listen and we, when we're in that quiet time with him. And I love what you just said because that was something that someone told me in seminary. Uh, because I was going through something very tough. Sometimes when we go through to seminary, to uh, school, to study about the Lord, uh, that is when the enemy wants to attack. Oh, yeah. Whenever we're serving him in a powerful way, uh, that is when we're going to have the most opposition. I was having a lot of opposition. Yeah, and distraction. And, and, and I was sharing all this with her, and she, and she said exactly that. What do you think God is trying to teach you mm -hmm. through this experience? And as I look back, as you get older, you start looking back at the worst of the worst of the worst of the trials, and you think that was the greatest period of spiritual growth. Yeah, and as I hard agree. as it is, you know, I'm like, Lord, help me to grow spiritually without the problems. But you know, it just yeah. seems like that's a nat the nature of humanity. Uh, we have to go through these things so that He can teach us something in the yeah. midst of it, right? And the testing, the testing. People say, oh, it's so hard, but the testing can be good. Yes. I've learned that. That was a revelation I had to get a couple of years ago. The testing can be good. So what do we do when we think we hear God's voice, but then it doesn't turn out? That, that, that's, that happened to me over the summer, and that yeah. just brought to mind something that you're saying about testing. And uh, I, I thought uh, I was up for a job. A headhunter reached out to me. I had not worked for another person in a, long, in a while. Yeah. But it was a job, a very important job in Washington, D.C., and I had lots of multiple messages, and I thought, it, God has got to be telling me that I need to uh, come out of retirement, this kind of retirement, and, um, and apply. And, and I, I was certain I was going to get it. I was actually looking for uh, places to live in this city. And so, as it turned out, I did not. And I was so confused. Mm -hmm. I, was so, I was like, I, I teach people about hearing the voice of God. How did I get it wrong? And somebody who's listening might, right now may have yeah. had an experience like that where they, they really thought they heard God's voice and then it didn't turn out like they thought it was supposed to. And that's what happened to me. And I went through like a two week uh, faith, a stretch of uh, faith, uh, like a, uh, where I just really questioned my battling faith. With uh, your battling faith. battling yeah. with my faith, battling uh, with who I was as a minister and uh, Finally, I came to the conclusion that I did hear God's voice, and this was a test. Yeah, He wanted to know if I would lay it all down, give it to Him, to follow Him somewhere else. I would literally would have had to lay down my ministry, lay down the television, mm -hmm. lay down everything. And I and my husband is the one that first said, "I think it's a test, like what Abraham did, you know, mm -hmm. like taking Isaac up to the altar and right. getting ready to, yeah, uh, yeah martyr him." Yeah. And uh, and that's exactly the comparison that he uh, gave me. And so I finally had to come to that 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 conclusion that this was a test of God, and that God was uh, wanting to know uh, if I was willing to just put it all aside yeah. and go where He was directing me to go. And that, that was the end of that. You know, I had to come to a place of trusting and just saying, okay, this is what I want, <laughs> but I know this is what you want. And now I'm just kind of in that space, I guess at 54 years old, I'm in that space of whatever you want, I know is best, so I'm just gonna be with it. Even though I'm thinking X, Y, Z, but I know your way is always better. And it took me some time to get there. And that's yeah. also hearing from him, you know, and that wisdom. You know, my, one of my prayers is, Lord, download your wisdom. Give me your wisdom. Yeah, when you're a type A personality like us, <laughs> you know, it's hard to not want to take control of the reins. And, uh, but I did the same thing you did. I remember striving when I first started into this ministry and trying to get speaking engagements and things like that and just really working hard and sending things out to churches. And there was just no fruit. But finally, I just had to lay it all down at the altar and say, Lord, you be my publicist. That's right. Will you, you bring speaking engagements to yes. me. Whatever you want me to do, just let me, make me uh, aware of what it is, and I will follow you. And since then, I have been so busy. It's, and, he, it, and it's not busy. It's fruitful. Not, fruitful. fruitful. Busy is not a good word these yeah, days. Yeah, you're fruitful, Fruitful, not busy. <laughs> fruitful, yes. The Lord has provided many opportunities. Yes. 
to uh, share his word with, yeah. with groups and things like that. And, and, and he brought the television to me after having a, a long time television career that I never thought I'd go back to. Well, he brought me back and I came kicking and screaming, but, but now I see how he's using this, uh, the way he's gifted me for his glory. Yes, and it's all for his glory. You know, just like you spoke last night about stepping out into the waters when he called us to do television, I was just scratching my head. <laughs> and, you know, but when it's his will, it's his bill. And when it's his will, he will make a way and he will also give you favor. You know, he's opened up so many doors of opportunity for both of us and so yes. many platforms with different networks. We didn't have to do anything, no. he did it all. And it's because we trusted him and we said, here, you do it. Your way is best. And he just, that's what he does. He'll, and I'm not saying that in an arrogant way, I'm saying that in a way of meaning, if you are obedient, he will give you the favor and he will give you the desires of your heart because he puts those desires in you. Yeah, I never understood the verse, Destiny, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. For many years, I didn't get that so much. But once I surrendered, I know we're getting off on another topic here, but maybe this is where the Holy Spirit yes. wants us to go. Um, once I surrendered everything to him, my schedule, my uh, minist the ministry, uh, you know, whatever career opportunities he wanted to give me, once I surrendered all that, it was easy. I didn't have to work very hard. Just like you said, the platforms, I, I thought, you want me to go back to television? This is crazy, you know, at my age. Well, I, I, I finally said, uncle, I'm gonna do it. And, and once I did it, I stepped into the floodwaters and then he parted the river, you know, the Jordan River for me. Um, he, he brought everything, the yes. guests, he brought uh, the platforms. People are saying, can, can we run your show? I'm yeah. like, what? This is amazing. I know. And I know you've experienced the yeah, same thing. Yeah, it's great. And then you don't go, <clears throat> you don't strive. And that is what I'm saying. What you're, my yoga is easy, my burden is light. He, he, when he calls you and you're obedient, He's going to take care of all this. Yeah, yeah, you got to do the work. Right. But but it's not going to be stressful. We're going to enjoy. It. We enjoy talking about mm -hmm. this right now. This has been it, it's like a mountaintop experience being able to talk about hearing the voice of God and and following his lead, isn't it? It I is. I mean, it's it's not work. You know, I was sharing with you um, Lisa does a lot more than we do and people say, "How do you do everything you do?" But when you work for the Holy Spirit, it is easy. It doesn't seem like you're really, like you said, we don't strive. It brings us joy to serve him. It brings us joy to sit here and just have a conversation about the Holy Spirit. And you can talk about him for five hours and it seems like you've only spoken about him for five minutes. Right. <laughs> you know? And if you start striving, then maybe God's saying, I, I've got another, I want to shift you. Take a look you. at that. Yeah, take a look at that. I want to shift you. That's the way he's speaking to you, right? Mm -hmm. I've always found with jobs, even in my secular television career, when things started going south or like for whatever, you know, new owners came in and maybe I wasn't their, you know, golden girl anymore yeah. or something like, and things started to go awry, I thought, I wonder if I'm supposed to leave. You know, if, 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 are you moving me? And we have to ask that question. Where do you want me to go? Right. I remember he moved me out of television and I didn't know what to do. All I had done was television. And so back then we had the want ads. And so I said, well, if you want me to do another job, you know, I looked at the one, I said, will you bring, lift something off the page? Well, he did. It was a public relations position. And what I found after our leaving television, he had so much more for me in ministry. I could have never, as a sportscaster, nights, weekends, I, I could have never gone to seminary like he called me right. to seminary. I could have never spoken as much. All I could do was teach Sunday school when I was doing television because that was the only time I knew I could, I could commit to Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. That was it because I might have to be at a game Sunday afternoon. So you just don't question him when right. he moves you. And when things are going hard in a job, say, well, Maybe it's time to, to move to something else. Where do you want me to go, Lord? And he will be yes. faithful and he will, he will talk to you. And sometimes it's through repeat messages. Uh, that's, that's a, I'm like a Moses, you know. I'm, Same I, here, I, I'm like, wait, that, that's confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it three times in the last, you know, day. Yes, and yeah. so I think repeat messages are uh, just an excellent way that uh, we can hear the voice of God, especially like maybe you'll tell me something and maybe I'll, I'll uh, hear something uh, from, a, like maybe there's a message that you listen to online or whatever. Let me just give you an example of this. 
And this is kind of a fun example. Okay, so it might sound a little bit frivolous to some people, but you know, I looked at this as a repeat message. Right. I was recently in New York City, and I was uh, shooting a part of a documentary that I did on anti-Semitism. And so I interviewed someone from the New York City Commission on Human Rights, and uh, I, was, I noticed her cute boots. And I said, where did you get those boots? They're so cute. She goes, TJ Maxx. I'm sorry, we're going to say a, a brand. And so, uh, <laughs> but it's part of the story. And so then um, uh, after I had done all this, I decided I'm going to go shopping. I'm in New York. And so I go mm -hmm. to Nordstrom's, and I, I decided I'm going to go to the jewelry. And there is a woman doing a trunk show. Her name is Frida Rothman. And uh, I, uh, sh I just said, she, I told her I was from Dallas, and I said I was shooting this documentary on anti-Semitism, trying to, uh, you know, trying to uh, uh, talk against anti-Semitism. And she, g she gave me a hug. She said, both of my grandparents were Holocaust survivors. Thank you for what you're doing. And then she showed me a pair of earrings that I have on right now that, were in, uh, that she dedicated to her grandparents oh, because wow. they, they relocated to Brooklyn, New York, where they were safe. Yeah. And that's what the, the, the iron on them is representative of the Brooklyn Bridge and where they found safety after being um, survivors of the Holocaust. Right. I decided, you know, I had to buy those. <laughs> you know, I bought yeah. them. But they blew my budget. And then she said, and then she said um, well, you can um, get, spend a lot on jewelry, but then you can go buy an inexpensive sweater at TJ Maxx. And so you're thinking, Lord, what are you trying to show me there? Is there something yes. there that I'm supposed to <laughs> No, that sounds for? crazy, but I, I had like two or three messages mm -hmm. about that, and he, I felt like he was saying, get these because it's going to be a reminder of how I spoke to you in your quiet time and called you to do this documentary, which started as a class project, and it's completed now, and yeah. it'll be out there soon. But uh, he called me to do it, and, and, and I'm doing it for so this, uh, the Holocaust will never happen again. Do you see how Amen. God used that yes. kind of thing to speak to me? We have to pay attention yes. to the repeat messages. That's right. And when we don't, he's going he's gonna, to uh, issue some tough love, I think. You know, yeah, I he, mean, he wants us to accomplish his plan, or else we're going to miss it. That's right, and you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss the plan that God has for you. That's why we have to take that time and hear from Holy Spirit. What is he trying to tell you? What is he trying to teach you? As we're coming to a close, um, I just want to just ask you, if you want to get closer to the Holy Spirit, just ask him. The word says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Draw near. He wants to speak to you. He wants to have that intimate relationship with you. Well, it's been such an honor to be with you today, Lisa. Thank Enjoyed you so it. much for being with us. You're such a joy always. And remember, folks, you can reach us at destinyx.tv, and we'll have some information as well on Lisa's ministry. Tell them how to get in touch with you. Real well, we're at uh, pearlsofpromiseministries.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. So you can find us there, and uh, we have a Pearls of Promise YouTube page if you want to check out our show, Pop Talk. Thank you so much for being with us, destinyx.tv. Until next time.